Hey, and welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video, we'll be going over the Work Plane tool. There are a few different tools over here in the Work Plane itself. You've got the Set, the Show, the Reference Plane, and the Viewer. All four of these are wrapped up together and are part of the Work Plane tool itself. Let's start first looking at Set. If I click Set, what I'm looking at now is I've got my current work plane. It's set to level one, and I can choose to show this or not. If I click show, it'll cycle between different views I have open. It'll ask me if I want to open more views. If I continue to hit show, I don't want to at this point. The current, most of these reference planes or work planes actually are going to be your levels. Everything in Revit is based off of work planes, be it levels that are considered datums, horizontal levels, and everything else that you might set in the project as a specific work plane. Maybe you have a family that's a face-based family. You can place it on any face, but you want to put it specifically on one work plane. Maybe you'd make your own work plane or set a specific work plane yourself. So we're going to go through all of those different things that you might do to set a work plane, apply a work plane, or just have work planes, just so you're aware of how they work in the project and what they're used for. If I look at the name here, these are all of the different work planes that I have available to me in the project, and that's either because they're levels, maybe they're reference planes, I don't have any reference planes at the time, maybe they're something in the project that I've set a work plane to, uh, this random countertop or this locker. I also have the option to pick a plane, you could pick any different face that's flat in the project to create a new work plane from or used as a work plane. And this last option, pick a line and use the work plane that it was sketched in. I cannot say that I've ever used that option just because I'm likely either using a reference plane, using a basic level, or I'm going to pick a specific face in the project as my work plane. So I'll set, I'll keep level one and something that you should know is if the work planes are based on the views that you're in. In this case, if I'm in a floor plan view, then the work plane is the level itself. So I'm in a level one floor plan view, so the work plane is level one. Likewise, level two, the work plane will be level two. The same works with elevations and sections based on where the cut is. The cut of the elevation is usually just beyond the tag in front of the building, the section could be anywhere and it's cutting through the building, so the work plane itself is that section cut location. And that's something to be aware of too, that the work plane will change based on the view that you're in. Now that's different with 3D. With 3D, it could be anywhere. It could be absolutely anywhere. And it's good to know where it is. And one way you can know where it is, if you hit show, you could see clearly that my work plane is down here. And I believe that is level one. One way to see what level is the current work plane is right here. The name, the current work plane is level one. I can change that to level two. And when I do that, you can see I've got this new highlighted line there. I'll hit okay. And now what's showing is level two. You can see because it's at the top there. So that was the basics of the set. The show, again, is just going to show your work plane. It's going to do nothing beyond that. I can orbit about and still see my work plane. This will not change based on the view because it will not change in that it will function the same, but the work plane will change by view, like I've said before. If I hit show here, it's clearly level one, but if I go back here at this 3D view, it's level two. It's it's different, it's view based. At this point, we'll go over some reference planes. Now I could go, I could make an entire video over reference planes, and in fact I will in the future because reference planes and their own thing as to when to use them, how to use them, everything managing them. I can't say I use them all that much just because I tend to pick some other face in the project just as a temporary work plane for what I'm doing, and I don't quite always use them. What I can do now is I will go to my floor plan and I'll make a couple reference planes because you cannot make reference planes in a 3D view. I'll hit reference plane. Let's draw a couple down here and here and I'll make one right there. So we've got these three reference planes down here 
and maybe you want to set one of these work planes and make one of these work planes the work plane or make one of these reference planes the work plane excuse me I can hit set and I can pick a plane just like anything else I can pick a plane and I have that option I can set that plane right there now what I'm prompted to do now is select a view to work in I can't see this work plane because it's technically straight up and down because it's a reference plane in a level one floor plan view so it's gonna ask me to open another view that I can see the work plane in this case let's go to the 3d view that's fine and so now I can see if I hit show I can see that weird looking work plane that is angled right there and that's because I just drew it I'll go back to the level one plan and if I go to set one more time you'll notice that you don't actually see the reference planes here you can't set them and that's a good and a bad thing it's a bad thing because you, maybe you want to set them without having to pick them but it's a good thing because there's a reason why you can't and this is it's very good that it's built in this way you can't set them because they're not named they're, they're just random floating reference planes at this point so what I'm gonna do is name these I'll name this one X let's name this one Y and I'll name this one Z. Now if I go back into set and select, I see here I have reference plane X, Y, and Z and I can select all of these that I can choose to make the current work plane from. That's very useful. And that's exactly why I recommend and always recommend saying please, please, please name your reference planes and name your new views. It, it's a pain if you're dealing with it and trying to manage it yourself but it's even more of a pain if someone else who's working in the project comes along and says hey what the heck is this and why is it there if they're new to Revit maybe they'll just delete it I don't know there's a lot of things that could go wrong if you don't name things correctly just so you know I'll go back to the 3d perspective view and just like before if I hit set I can choose to pick a plane and like before in the, in the floor plan views I could select one of those reference planes because I could see them but if I hit pick a plane in 3d I have the option to choose any single face in the entire project so I could like before I have one of those weird lockers showing up as one of the reference planes and that's because someone must have chosen for example the top or any face of those lockers as the current reference plane point I don't know why but that that's why and so now if I go if I choose set and for a different example let's choose this right here and what is this it's a file cabinet so if I go to set and I should yeah I see file cabinet there that's currently the work plane but I also have the other countertop and lockers because those were formally associated and set as the work plane not sure why but they'll show up there in that list once you set those different places maybe you need to place a family on top of these lockers so you can set a work plane there and place a family that works but for an instance like that I'd probably just leave the work plane at level one and use the correct offset or something like that built into the family to put that particular family on top of the lockers anyways something else I can do is if I want to set this wall maybe I have something that's going on this wall I could set the face of this wall to the current work plane and if I hit show I can see that that particular face of the wall is the active work plane and whatever the active work plane is even in 3d I can draw lines I can even dimension in 3d so that's maybe why you might want to set a particular work plane like this in 3d so I can draw a couple lines here just for the heck of it and maybe I want to dimension this because I can actually dimension this in 3d and this will stick to the work plane because you know that makes sense these lines are on the work plane the, the dimensions are on the work plane again it makes sense that may be a reason why you want to just quickly see where things are in 3d you could do something like that so I've gone through the set and the show and the reference plane and if we look at the viewer now if I click viewer immediately this other window pops up and it's it's essentially like another 3d view but what it's saying over here at the top you can read it it says work plane viewer 
active work plane so it's going to keep displaying the active work plane and that's it's currently that wall and if i zoom extents i can see that everything is is weirdly ghosted but i can clearly see this work plane and that's because i'm i'm able to show it there i can't say that i necessarily use this viewer like really ever <laughs> Just because of, it's another window, I don't really want to have to worry about. I'm not going to drag it around. I don't need to constantly check where my work plane is. But if I need to do that, I'll either hit set and see where it is. It will highlight then, or I can just quickly show it. Don't necessarily need to have this viewer here, but hey, maybe you maybe you want to dock it somewhere, you know, out here and just have it floating off. And you could always have it open. You could always see where your work plane is. So for example, I can hit set and I can pick a plane and let's just pick the face of this door. So now this view is going to update to my new work plane and it's highlighted right there because I'm showing it and everything's ghosted and I can see exactly where that work plane is. It's helpful, but at the end of the day, it's not something I use all the time and you're welcome to use it if you want. One final thing we can look at for the reference planes is just like before, when I was able to draw on the wall and create dimensions and lines and all of that, I can do the same thing with the reference plane. So I'm in 3D right here and I can hit set and let's set this current work plane to the that X reference plane. And because I can't see it, I'd like to show it. And I can see it's right here. It's not very big. And what I can do now is I'm not, I'm not forced to simply draw on this work plane within the extents of the blue. I, that's just the work plane itself that I'm drawing on. So I can draw these lines way over here that do something weird like that, and they will stick to that work plane. See, just like that. They're stuck to that work plane. And now maybe what I want to do is set the reference plane to the Y. And I'm doing this just to as an example so you can see that this changes clearly so I can see the extents the extents of this plane are greatly different I can even push and pull them this way just to extend them in 3d maybe I want to bring them down a bit this again this doesn't impact the ability to where you can draw or anything like that or place objects it's just this is just a reference at that point it's just the extents of the reference plane so if I draw lines now I, I'm now drawing these lines on that work plane right there. You can see how the how the reference planes can be a useful tool as well as setting these different work planes for different reasons. I wouldn't go too crazy with having a bunch of different reference planes for this and that and every little thing, but you could. You can make them specific to certain things. In this case, if I need to draw lines or add objects to a specific layer or work plane. Finally, the last thing we can look at is at these reference planes, if I look at them, they are 3D. And you can see that those extents in 3D, like before, they're right there. These are the extents. But they kind of operate similarly to grid lines. If you're familiar with grid lines at all, when you select them, you can see 3D because they're de by default 3D. And, but if I choose this 3D, I can switch the extents to 2D. So now I can push and pull the edge of this work plane just in this view because it says 2d i can pull it over here but you'll always have to remember that if i'm pulling something in 2d and just editing the way it looks in this specific view then it's not going to have any effect on the extents in 3d because clearly i could see that the extents in, in 3d are based on these bubbles and these bubbles did not move at all when I changed this to from 3D to 2D. Now I can push and pull in 3D using these bubbles, but this push and pull is just in 2D. It's just for this view only. If I go to a different view, it's gonna look the, the same as it originally did when I originally drew it. So that's gonna do it for the work plane tool. It's a fundamental tool of Revit, but it's good to know always good to know how to use work planes because you're going to deal with them all the time. They're just a part of your modeling life in Revit. It's just the way it works. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
And if you learned something, which I hope you did, please demolish that like button. It really helps. Also, subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.